This uh, Hellboy sculpt that you're seeing here is for an upcoming, um, first of all, it's an unfinished uh, sculpt and it's gonna be, um, I'm working on a, a sculpting series that will be ready soon. I don't wanna output it yet anyway, A, because uh, the sculpt isn't totally finished, but B, because I'm using Blender 2.9 Alpha and I wanna wait until at least the beta is released before I leave release the sculpt um, series. But anyway, it's just a little bit of eye candy, just showing you what I'm getting up to. Um, the main reason I'm uploading today is, um, and why I titled title this is The Unholy Alliance, is basically I want to talk about um, a workflow that I'm going to be experimenting with that basically combines Blender, 3ds Max, and um, the Unreal Engine. I kind of uh, bounced the idea across to uh, Spitfire, uh, studios um, who I think is he's got one of the best shout out to big up uh, Spitfire Studios he's got one of the best grease pencil um, tutorials out there if you I put there's a he's on my featured list so, and, and I'll put a link below so you can check him out as well but anyway I fired this uh, I just had a little brief chat with him and and, and talked about this workflow with him so um, here's the but before we get into the workflow, some people are going to be a bit, um, how do you put it, apprehensive about using uh, three different programs, especially Autodesk. You know, um, I'm not going <laughs> to. There's going to there's there's for obvious reasons Autodesk is getting a lot of of flack at the moment. Now, I come from a background of using Autodesk. I've been using 3ds Max. Um, for years, I was using it when it was called 3D Studio. So it was called 3D Studio first. I was using it way back then. Um, so I've seen the progress of it. Now, I've I've played with 3D Studio at Max. I've played with Maya, and obviously I've played with Blender. And I've played with other animation softwares as well. I feel this is my this is one of the reasons why I've chosen this uh, workflow with why I put a 3ds Max in, in this particular workflow is I feel 3ds Max is more user friendly when it comes to rigging and the animation than Blender. I also find it more user friendly for rigging and animation than Maya. Maya I feel is more it might have more powerful and advanced features for rigging However, I feel it's geared for bigger studios. So if you've got, uh, you know, a lot of these bigger studios who use Maya, they have a, a particular team of riggers who just rig for the animators. Where with 3ds Max, you could use your biped or you could use Cat. Um, I Cat to me, I feel I I found it a little bit too buggy. Uh, to use, I really wanted to use it because I, I find it quite sexy. But I think um, biped is is what I know anyway, so that's what I'm going back to. I just feel Blender for animation is is not that strong. Right, so let's just get back onto this um, this workflow, this experimental workflow, which I'm really really excited about. Right, if you've been following the channel, you know that I'm doing this uh, scavenger. Um, I'm going to be doing a scavenger series in the future which is basically going to be a small animated uh, series, which I'm not going to start production until next year, sometime uh, mid next year. And I'm going to be using Grease Pencil for that and uh, mix with uh, 2D animation, basically mixed with 3D animation. Now, my initial plan for the workflow was um, obviously to do, do it all in uh, Blender, but I just found, found it just uh, the Blender animation not the 2D side of animation, but the 3D animation, not not up to par. So I've decided to, to to step back and use 3ds Max for the animation. So basically, the workflow is this: I'm going to use 3ds Max for um, all my animation, rigging, etc. I'm going to use Blender for the sculpting of the characters, and whatever. And this is where the where where the experimental workflow comes in. I have to do some 
some due diligence to make sure this works. But here's the plan. And this, not just for myself, but this could be an interesting idea for you, for you guys as well. Now, if unless you've been living under a rock, you might have realized that Unreal has come out, the Unreal Engine. And it kind of, I looked at it, and it's, this is an idea that's been percolating in my mind in the back burners for a long time about the future of animation. Now, imagine this. We create our, our, for some scenes, it won't work for every scene, but for some scenes, you create your animations in, in um, obviously, create your sculpt first or your character, get it optimized and get it into 3ds Max, or even if you wanted to use Maya or whatever, or any animation pro, even if you wanted to just use Blender completely for the animation, and then you pull it into uh, Unreal Engine. You rig up your animation to a, a game controller, and then say for example, walk, uh, walking or running, or it's interacting with the scene, and you want to use the particle systems, you could do all of that with, you know, literally with a, a hand controller, and then. Once you've finished it, you are you you know the, the running because it's going to look a bit gamey some of you know, some of the the stuff because you say it's running and it stops and it comes to an idle or whatever. Um, there are features, and again, I've got I, this is just me doing a bit of research where you can export your animation. So if you've done this run cycle or whatever, you can export it back into um, your three D package of, of choice, and then you can fine tune your animation. And once you fine tune your animation, bring it back in. And then you can bring it in, and then you can add your, the chaos physics with Unreal Engine, and all of this, and the particle systems, and all that stuff. And then you can do basically your post production all in Unreal, and then just render it out near enough at real time. So I think that's a really sexy um, workflow. And I also think if you, there's, I think it's going to be the future of animation that you don't have to do every single thing by hand. We are moving away from doing every single thing. If you, and I think it would be fun, because it's, if you remember, animation is all about storytelling. And if we freeze up, freeze up um, the, especially the smaller studios, to do more um, high quality stuff, I think it's a, it's a positive. So the idea of just imagine um, using a, a game controller to do some of the animations and then bringing them back you still gonna have to do the animation. You know, suddenly it's gonna happen by magic, but to to be able to export, record your movement and bring it back into 3D Studio or or 3ds Max or Maya or even Blender, and then fine tune your animation and bring it out finally for your and then interact with the scene. I just think it's 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 a fantastic uh, model. Uh, and obviously, I'm I'm gonna be using grease pencil. I'm not sure if grease pencil is gonna be be able to import in time rule. again this is going to be experimental this is why this um i'm going to what i'm going to try and do with this series as well is i'm going to try and um show the the workflow and hopefully sh maybe show some of the failures as well as the successes and and try and show the pipeline of trying to get an experimental workflow uh go going so for that you guys can go, yeah, that, that works and it's, it's cool and it's, it's the way forward. So anyway, this is only episode one. Um, hit that like button, hit that subscribe and I'm out. Laters.